So if you've ever worked outside a lot in the garden or you've gotten some certain kind of hobby or you've started playing a stringed instrument, you know how easy it is for the sensitive skin on your hands and fingers to blister and get sore with the overuse. So your body ends up developing calluses. And that's really neat because it protects your fingers and your hands from further damage. But what happens if you get a callus on your heart? Stay tuned. Amy, have you seen my callus collection? No. Hey, I'm Amy with Greater Than Rubies, and this week we're gonna kind of follow up to last week's sex and marshmallow discussion, where we were wondering why in the world God would make these delightful bits on humanity and then ask us to wait to use them until marriage. By the end of the episode last week, we had discovered that God is not arbitrarily testing you or asking you to do something that would hurt you or make you miss out, but what he was trying to do is protect you. This week, we'll continue to explore that topic. We concluded last week that God is not arbitrarily trying to be a jerk and keep us from enjoying ourselves Rather, he is protecting us from the potential pain that comes along with having sexual relationships outside of marriage. Here's the cool thing though. There is another half to that. Not only is God trying to protect you and me from pain, he actually wants to increase our pleasure. Here's where the weird callus analogy comes in. A callus protects your hand, right? but it also prevents you from really feeling any sensitive touch in the area of the callus. And that's just like what happens with our heart. The same toughness that it requires to recover from relationship after relationship, especially those of a sexual nature, also prevents you and me from feeling that fullness, that sensitivity, that joy of other-centered love. This might come as a surprise to some of you because we don't talk about sex a lot in church, which I think is a shame. But the interesting thing to me is that God definitely cares about your sexual freedom and your sexual liberation. And I know it's hard to believe, so I want to read you a verse from Genesis 2.25. It says in the NIV, Adam and his wife were both naked, and here's the best part, they felt no shame. They were naked together and felt no shame. That's sexual freedom. That's a beautiful thing. I want to illustrate this concept of sexual freedom by telling you the story of two different girls. So our first girl, when she's about 14, she decides she wants to save everything sexual for the marriage bed. And she is called a prude and sometimes teased, but she sticks to it. Our second girl, her neighbor, about the same age, doesn't decide this and has several sexual partners through her 20s. By the time this girl gets married in her early 30s, she has been cheated on and broken up with, and she's actually developed some calluses on her heart. Because she's been through so much, she had to get tough. And so now that she's in this relationship with a good man, I might add, she is not able to fully commit herself to him. She's always wondering in the back of her mind, hey, what if he sees somebody prettier? Is he going to leave me? Or is he thinking about ex-lovers while we're making love? Or, I mean, is there something wrong with me? And she's always measuring herself against other women. Also, there are things that come up that make her doubt his fidelity. She finds a phone number in his pocket one day and is immediately distrustful about whose phone number that is. It ends up being some landscaper guys, but in her mind she thinks, I bet that's another woman's number and I bet he's stepping out on me. So you can see that this second girl, because of the callousness that she's had to put around her heart, because of her past experiences, she's carrying some baggage into the marriage. Now our first girl who had decided she wanted to remain pure and save sex till marriage, 
This girl knows that she is his one and only. She has no guilt, no shame, no baggage. And so I want to ask you, which of these girls is experiencing real sexual freedom and liberty? Hey, I know this is a really weird thought for some of you, but God wants you to be able to stand with your husband naked and unashamed. He doesn't want you to have to deal with guilt or baggage. He doesn't want you to have any calluses on your heart that would prevent you from having the most phenomenal sexual experience ever. That's why God cares about this stuff. I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you're not eating any calluses. Um, if you would and you enjoyed this, please subscribe because it lets the search engines know this is something worth watching and it puts it higher up on the search engine results when someone looks for something like sex or calluses. So please subscribe and there are also some helpful links below as well. Thanks for watching today. See you soon and I love you. Bye. Calluses are tasty. Calluses.